name is Sam, and thanks for checking out this video. Make sure to hit the, if you get to the end, and hit the like button, subscribe button, bell notification button, yada, yada, yada. So I want to tell you about the books that I read this week, and I read a buttload this week. I feel like I caught up this week, like caught up. That being said, I did read a total of six uh, books, um, so it would be a long one, but one of them I did read was Wicked Saints. I want to do an own video review for it. Someone also asked me to do a video specifically of just the Wicked Saints review, so I'm going to do that. Um, it should be coming up in the next week or so, but like, gist of it was I loved it. This week I read The Dead Queen's Club by Hannah Kapin, which is a contemporary Henry VIII retelling with a little bit of Mean Girls sprinkled in. So it's set like regular town in the U.S. high school. Henry has daddy issues. Shocker. He's a teenage boy. Super popular. So he goes through these girlfriends who all have the same name as the real Henry VIII's wives. Catherine of Aragon, Anne Boleyn. Oh, is it Catherine Parr? No, Jane Seymour. Catherine Parr. Parr. I think there was a Howard and then the one that survived, outlived him. Either way. He had six wives. We go through that. And... Just as in real life, Anne Boleyn ain't alive in this one, okay? There are some sketchy circumstances around why she's no longer alive, which mimic a lot of the history. In university, I went in and got my history degree, my BA, and I originally went in wanting to do the tutors, and I like, and then being like, oh, I'll do English history. I feel like the tutors are like the, I don't know, the Romanovs of English history. I feel like everyone else after them was like kind of a little boring or super repetitive. Whereas like, and then I switched to Russian history. I was like, oh my God, Russian history. Why did I think it was boring? It's absolute psychoticness. So I switched basically to Russian history. I it I, I could really appreciate the, the, the little details that she threw in here. She didn't just name all the girlfriends after the wives. She gave them distinct personalities. She tried to mimic or mirror their... Um, their what happened to them in in a contemporary setting as much as possible i, I end up giving this like three and a half or four out of five stars i'm still kind of teetering in between Ugh, i don't know how to, how to quit put this so the whole time we're basically getting the perspective of cleveland who's supposed to be anna cleves if i hadn't said anna cleves when i was thinking of the wives i don't know why i didn't anna cleves so she is basically the anna cleves she is the best friend of henry they met at summer camp um and she is kind of there through thick and thin trying to help him um, and we pick up after Anne Boleyn's been killed and after he's dumped the first girlfriend and after Jane Seymour's left, right? So we get a little bit of flashes from, to, like, when they meet at the summer school and why they became friends. Um, and they have, like, a tiny bit of romantic history, but nothing major. But this evolves quickly from, I think, the first half. I was kind of almost at the 50% mark, and I was like, how are, what is, what is the rest of this book going to be about? Like, we're kind of here we should be kind of done and then there's like this whole murder mystery aspect which was not expecting it to be it to be and i loved that part i feel like that was where it really caught its stride it took like probably half the book to really introduce the characters and develop them and give you a sense of the setting and kind of get the sense that there's something wrong there's people lying um and you can't exactly tell who is lying you just know that there's lots of people lying it's very feminist too it made me think a lot of moxie it does bring up uh cleaves especially throughout it whenever she hears someone call like Amberlynn a slut she turns around and claps back of like why are you slut shaming a girl when he's the one who's dated all these different women you're assuming things about her you don't know her she's not even here to defend herself like there's a lot and there's like this school newspaper where she wants to talk about all these issues and her editor keeps shutting her down and there it, it just it gave me the hardcore moxie the book by jennifer Matthew, matthews um vibe which uh, I, I really love that that was brought up and i feel like it made me less angry than moxie did moxie is supposed to make you angry and it's a good book for that but i can only be angry about so many things so many different times of the day like it's exhausting <laughs> so i feel like this did a good job of like being like oh thank you for clapping back at that bs but can like let's move on to the point like yes let's let's women support each other not tear each other down and let's figure out who murdered this one <laughs> right? i think my really only issue with it was and I, I think it just really bugged me because the feminist parts of it were so like out there and obvious and like yeah don't slut shame each other why are we accusing this girl of doing something when this dude is sleeping around the school too like but then at the end like i'm not no spoilers but i feel like cleaves i didn't buy the relationship at the end between Cleves and Harry, like it, it didn't seem to fit what happened. It didn't feel right. I, I just don't, 
and, and maybe that's because I'm like a, if I find someone's been lying to me or if people are talking behind your back or betraying people, like I just cut those people out of my life. Even if you're friends, even if we've been there for a long time, I just cut those people out. That's just kind of my personality. I don't tend to think twice about it. If that's the sort of person or situation or drama you want to be involved in, you're done. It may hurt, but I think in the long term, it's always better. Um, and if those people want to change and come back into your lives, great. But I'm not putting myself through that. So I just feel like maybe that was why. It kind of kept saying throughout the book when Anne was talking to Cleves, was like, he's a douche. He's doing that. Like, why are you doing this? This is messed up. But it, I think it just, um, but then when, when someone said something problematic outside of Henry, she just kind of gave, like, immediately saw that. I don't know. I don't know how to explain it. Maybe if you read it, you'll understand it. But that part just kind of irked me and bugged me. And I don't know that it fit the book. Or maybe it did. I don't know. It really just messed with my head. I would actually recommend this one. May if you've read this, please put below. I have my friend Muriel that she tried to explain it. And I still don't buy it. But if you can explain to me if you've read this. And if you think the ending was a good one with Anne of Cleves and Henry. Then, like, please Please explain it to me. Then I also read The Afterword by E.K. Johnston this week. This is a fantasy standalone that picks up in this world after. It's the after of, you know, when after Selena Sardothian takes down this kingdom. It's the after when you've come back after, you know, saving or completing a quest for the king. It's the after, right? Now, it's, it's set technically then. I enjoyed this book from start to finish. I love the characters. There's a good female-female romance. I liked all of their character development and the adventuring. However, I feel like it's mistitled. That's my beef with it. Like I said, it's set in the afterward, but we flash back to the before a lot. Like, I'd say almost 50% of the book, it felt like, was in the past. So I was kind of like, uh, is that? the right title it's a very little thing to be annoyed by but i just really was because i feel like the, the title was so distinct ek johnson does this thing especially with gender roles and sexuality of always having diversity and there is a bi character there's a lesbian character i remember one vividly is bi i just can't remember if the one they actually identify her as lesbian either way it's a female female romance but i really love that in this world it's economic status that bars you from knighthood. So the main characters, she is after. She's done all this stuff for the kingdom. She's in good standing. And then she goes back to petty crime and keeps getting in trouble because of the financial. She wants to become a knight and can't afford it. And it's even after getting the, the money for whatever she did, she, pay, she has to pay off her debts. It's really all she's able to afford to do with it, which hashtag millennial life. Like I could win the lottery and basically just like pay off my student loans and like, buy a house and I'd be kind of it like that's that's just millennial life so I thought that was interesting and I do think it was important because I feel like a lot of the time when we read books where like women want to go into generally male dominated professions a lot of the time they talk about like the gender blocking which absolutely was real but I feel like a lot of the times it's the financial blocking which we don't really talk about which like I thought I thought it was actually pretty like ironic that this was being talked about because it was literally this week where the whole like college uh college admission thing happening where people were just like paying for their kids to get past the SATs and get into colleges and like I just thought that was heavily ironic. I, I really like that the big barrier here is these women this girl wants to go into the knighthood and it's not the blocking of oh well you're a woman. It, that is like literally never mentioned. It's not a thing in this world. And I was like oh can you imagine living in a world where you could just do whatever the heck you wanted and like didn't matter what your gender was like oh that would be like wonderful so i think at the end i gave it a four out of five stars enjoyed and it's a fancy standalone it's not big it's not super difficult or boring or anything like that so i'd highly recommend this week i also read sapphire blue by kirsten gear this i also realized i don't think i'd mentioned this when i talked about ruby red this is originally german um and then translated um I, considering I read Winter's Promise, which was French and translated into English, and that translation was an abomination, this is a good translation. I will absolutely say that. Translate from German by Anthea Bell. So Anthea Bell, props to you girls, and go talk to Europa because they need help. I legitimately hate these covers so much. I detest them. I've had some, a couple people say, like, the hard covers are better. I know they have, like, the designer on. They still have the stupid white girl in the middle face. Uh, and someone told me the German ones are cool, and I like the German ones. But, like, I don't love this series enough to buy German language editions, right? It's not never more for me. However, Gwen is in this world now. She knows that she can time travel and it's not her cousin who has that capability. And she's with a strapping young gentleman 
who they probably have romantic tension. Maybe, but they definitely don't, but they definitely do. They're trying to find out why someone stole something and stop it. And she keeps kind of going back and forth in time. Okay, I didn't dislike this book. I think it's still like a 3, 3.5 out of 5 stars. It's a solid book. It's fun. It's pretty quick. Um, I think this book, this series really throws me off. Like literally, I think this between the beginning of Ruby Red and like this book, it's only like been 24 hours in their world. <laughs> a classic middle book syndrome. And I think by that, I mean, it's kind of like, they were like, okay, we're gonna make this a trilogy. And they were like, oh, okay, I have plots for duology. All right, now what we'll do, we'll split book two, or we'll split book one and two in like half. So we'll make it and then push those halves together. There, it's, it kind of just felt like filler. It just felt like doing the same repetitive motions, spinning wheels plot wise. Um, I don't think anything really started happening until the end. So this book could have honestly been split in half and first half put in ruby red and second half put in emerald green. It's, I don't think it's boring necessarily, but I think it's too of like, they don't do all these massive time jumps and then nothing happens. I think that's what really bugs me in books. It literally is like one day or two days at most where this whole thing happens. So I'm okay with it. And I'll read emerald green and publishers, please do better. <laughs> this is just so bad. This week I also did a reread of Wind Witch by Susan Dunard. I I think I remembered and retained more of this than the Truth Witch. <laughs> I enjoy the politics of this more and the cast growth. Um, and the, my real interest in this is, oh, I can't remember her name. The um, kind of evil queen character whose brother is like out trying to like get them food and whatever. The girl that's like his sister that's back home who he kind of leaves oh I can't say that that's spoiler she's back home ruling the country there we'll just leave it at that it's interesting that she's not just like evil villainized like there's a point to her madness sort of concept and I don't think she's quite as evil as a you know a, a, she becomes less evil and more like oh okay I get why she's doing that sort of throughout the book which I think is what I really really love and I love that oh, I just love Sophie so much and like the end I'm, I love how this book ends. Um, like it hurt, but I love how this book ends. So I'm really, really excited to read Blood Witch. I'm, I think I'm going to read Blood Witch and then go back and read Sight Witch. I think I'm going to continue with this series. My issue is always just like, I forget the freaking Truth Witch book like itself. I think this is one of the series that I think it's supposed to be five books total. Every time a new one comes out, I'm going to go have to go back and reread this whole series because I don't remember. I don't know why I can't retain Truth Witch. And lastly, this week, I read The Valley of Fear by Sir Arthur Conan Doyle. This was one that I don't think I've ever read, seen, or heard of a retelling of. If I have, it's, it's not coming to my mind anyways. Um, I think this is, I was pleasantly surprised. I feel like what some of them I was just like, meh, or some that, like, that I hadn't heard of any retellings of, or... I had just such, such high hopes for it because I had seen such good retellings, but I feel like The Valley of Fear was, it was like good on its own and good on its standalone. I think, I, I, I feel like I've seen and heard and read that general premise since, like in more recent releases. So I think that's kind of why it seemed a tiny bit familiar to me, but I really like how Sir Arthur Conan Doyle like writes like from his perspective and then flashes back of like oh so this is why um and then at the end we have this neat little bow kind of tied up um not stro not like for the characters but the story itself is kind of comes back full circle right um so I really really enjoyed that and I think I didn't I mean I didn't write it because I'm doing that whole anthology of Goodreads but I'd give that one like a five out of five stars I actually really really enjoyed it um, compared to some of the other ones. I think that's probably one of my favorites that I've read so far. And next I will start His Last Bow. And I am like almost done this anthology, man. Like it's taken me a year and a half. But like His Last Bow is page 831. So like I have four, no, 300 more pages basically. So yeah, very excited. And yeah, I, the Valley, uh, the, the Fear, the Valley, the Fear, the Valley of Fear is, is actually a really, really good one. So those are all the books that I read this week. Let me know in the comment section down below what you read this week. I would love to know if you've read any of these, especially the Dead Queens Club. Help me out. <laughs> Make sure to check the description box down below. I will link all of these books to their Goodreads pages. And I'll also link all of my social media. If you follow me, I will follow you back.